Hi, my name is Mark. So we're going to do another episode of Bass Playing Tricks for Guitar. Bass Playing Tricks for Guitar. I did the first video a while ago actually, and you can check it out right there if you haven't already. I honestly didn't really think people would care a lot about that series, but it is effectively the one I've received the most support for. So yeah, let's just see how it goes. And again, if you've watched the last video, you probably recall that we talked about chromatic bass lines and how to use them in your solos and whatever. Mostly simple stuff, and although bass playing is not really just about bass lines, as I've mentioned before, bass playing is mostly about having that foundation for the song. In a way, it's almost the piece that connects the drums to the rest of the guitars and vocals. And even if it's some slapping and popping stuff, it usually, unless it's some like funky bass solo stuff, it usually isn't very complex. And also because if you're listening to a song, in most songs the bass usually isn't the one that's providing the melody, so you don't want it to be popping out all the time. If your bass line or the bass part you're playing is sticking out too much in the song and takes the attention of the listener from the vocals or from the lyrics or from the main melody, you are either not playing the correct part, and in some situations there might be a problem with the whole song, not just your bass line, but independently of that, if you end up playing something that either the band or the producer doesn't really think is appropriate, you might not get called to the next session or to the next gig. So there are a couple of rules to make an effective bass line. Maybe not the greatest, the fanciest, or the coolest to play, but the most effective. And I think there's something to learn from those tricks that you can apply to your own guitar soloing and composing. And that's what we're going to talk about today. But before we get into it, I just want to say, please subscribe to my channel. You're probably aware that YouTube's been acting a little bit weird lately, even if you subscribe to the channel. Those channel's videos may really not show up in your subscription box, and even if you ring the little notification bell thingy below, you still really will not be notified of that channel's content. So if you want to see to my content, I highly suggest you subscribe, turn on all the notifications, and since that may or may not work, I highly suggest you follow me on social media. Not only do I post some exclusive stuff there, I can provide solos and jamming cover backing tracks, and generally wherever I'm up to at the moment, but I always post there about my videos. Links for the usual suspects will be below, like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, but in general, at Mark and Rick's Guitar. And since you're down there, please consider leaving a like, and perhaps share this video on social media. I'd highly appreciate it. But yeah, I guess now we can get straight into it. Okay, so there are a bunch of things to consider when you're building a baseline, and we'll definitely talk about a bunch of them, during the next couple of videos, but in this video we're going to talk about the directions notes go in when you're playing your bass lines. And what exactly do I mean by that? Let's say that you're supposed to play a bass line over the following chords. D and G. And you want to play a bass line on top of those chords, but you don't just want to play the roots, you want to play something that moves from chord to chord. I deliberately chose these chords because they're all major chords, so the bass line you do on one chord will work on the other chords. Just to make it a little bit more simple. So for instance for the G major, let's say that on the bass you do something like... Simple stuff, right? You can do the same thing on the next chord. And this sort of easy bass line works rather fine. Again, it's probably not the funnest bass line to play, and it's definitely not the most complex one, but it's an effective one. And if we analyze what we're playing over each chord, we start on the root, and we go up to the third, we pass by the ninth, and we get to the root of the next chord. So in a way, the direction we're following is, we start neutral, we go up, we go down, but not below the root, and we move to the next chord. If I play you this bass line, and then I switch a couple of the notes around, but still keeping the same sort of flow, it will not really stand out that much. I think I did them in the D major and C major chords. Instead of going root, third, second, or ninth, I went root, fifth, third, which is basically arpeggiating the D major chord. Because I went root and then fifth up the root and then down the fifth but not below the root, it still keeps the same sort of motion between bass lines. be asking, okay, that's cool and all, but why is it important? I'll do the same thing again. I'll play a regular bass line, 
and then on the second round I'll play the same bass line, but in one of the chords I'll not keep that same motion. Instead I'll just go with notes that are, for instance, behind the root, lower than the root, to stop our motion a little bit. <laughs> On the second turn I went around those chords, when I reached the C major chord, instead of doing that same old bass line, I did, which is going root, going to the fifth of that chord, going to a G, and then going to an E, which is the third of C major. But this time instead of going up the root like I did before, I went below. And it's not like it sounded bad or anything. All of those notes worked. Those are all notes that are within the C major chord, and there are notes that we played before. When I played that variation of the bass line, I'm pretty much playing the same thing, just an octave lower. It's the same thing, but in my opinion, it didn't really work as fine. When we do the descending one, that one stands out a little bit more when it may not need to. There might be some situations where this sort of stuff works, but if you're playing over a simple pop rock song, you really don't want to complicate stuff, you want to have a good foundation. And now you might be thinking, okay, that's cool and all, but how can I apply this to composing and guitar playing soloing stuff? Again, you can use this for a whole lot of stuff, and I've done videos about that before, which you can check out in the card section right there. But even for like those Jimi Hendrix sort of vamps, you can use that sort of stuff. For when you're playing over chords and even throw them in during your leads. But if I give you an example, again there are tons of things you can do with this sort of stuff, but if I give you just one example for you to apply during your solos, let's say that again you're playing over this sort of chord progression and you're trying to play over those chords. trying to play a perfect solo, just trying to give you an example, because unlike our bass line, which followed a certain motion and provided a little bit of a foundation, even though in this solo we're playing all the correct notes, compared to a bass line it may not sound as solid. And that's not necessarily a problem, it's mostly the idea that we have of a guitar solo. But if we add the sort of motion ideas to our guitar solo, we can get something a little bit different. For instance, when we start out with our D major chord, Let's say that we're playing one of our regular blues legs, like... Mostly like D major pentatonic, we're only really adding something like this, A sharp. That's a good leg to start our solo, right? But then we move to our A major chord. Instead of doing a completely different leg, we can perhaps play some different notes, but follow the same sort of movement. You can just play the same thing in A. But in most cases in guitar solos, if you just do the same thing over and over again, it can sound a little bit robotic. We can perhaps do something like... Same thing with our A leg. We go up the root, and then we go to the G below the root to resolve, just like we did with the D. We go below the root, resolution. Below the root, resolution. And if you apply the same thing to the next chords, Again, it's not like it completely revolutionizes your solo. But there are things like these that make solos a little bit more different and sometimes more interesting. Again, this sort of stuff is something that I already think about because I started out on bass. But for those of you who just started on guitar and didn't really start on bass or don't really play bass, it's something that you may have 
perhaps not considered yet. For the C major chord, again, you can perhaps play something more bluesy. Again, I started on C. Went up the root, up and down a little bit, and then I finished the lick below the root. So we're going to do the same thing for the G major chord. Again, the same sort of lick, starting on G. Going up. And then to resolve back to the G, we go below the G. So now our little solo is something like... poorly played, but I think you get the point, right? And again, I'm not really saying you need to play all of your licks like this all the time. Just something that you may want to consider when playing your solos. If you're tired of your same old playing or, oh, I'm just playing my same pentatonic licks all the time. Just something you may want to consider. And before we get to the outro, I just want to say, if you actually end up using any of this yourself and or you actually end up practicing any of this sort of stuff, Please, film yourself playing it and post it on Instagram, and then tag me on it. Not only will I see it, but I'll repost it and tag you on it. I really like to see what you guys can come up with. But for now, let's just get to the outro. Thank you so very much for watching, I hope this video was helpful to you in any way possible. And if it was, please leave me a comment below. Did you have anything to add to this discussion? Did you agree? Did you not agree? Was there something I missed? Something I should have said? Also, if you have any suggestions for videos, I have this dedicated series called Yate, You Ask, I Teach. I know, pretty boring, generic and self-explanatory title, but as you can guess, and as the name pretty much implies, in that series I teach anything you guys have in the comment section below. Well, guitar and their music related, of course. We've done a couple of episodes already, I'll leave the playlist in the card section right there, but if you have something you want me to talk about, just leave it in the comment section below with the hashtag Yate. And other than this series of bass playing tricks for guitar, I also do some other videos, sometimes discussions and music theory lessons, like what's the big deal with the melodic minor scale, other times just like guitar related stuff, like how to improvise and break out of the box and play solos and whatever, or how to play over chord changes by just using mostly your pentatonic scale. And other times I take a look from a player that I either think is interesting, or the look itself is a little bit different from what they usually play, and then I break it down and transcribe it so that you guys can check it out, like Paul Gilbert's secret jazzy bebop lick. But there are a bunch more in the back catalog that you can check out. But yeah, I guess that's it. Again, thank you so very much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and on all the notifications. Follow me on social media and perhaps share this video on social media. I'd highly appreciate it. Check out some of my other videos and leave a comment for my 8 series if there's something you want me to talk about. And cheers!